Okay, so here we are. So welcome to the first Facebook Live with the founder of Jim's group and probably more known for Jim's mowing in the public. We have Jim Penman, so welcome, Jim. Um, just want to start with a few things before we get into it. When people watch, they'll start from watching up here. Um, basically, shout out to anyone who actually liked or shared or commented on the post that we put up on the Jim's group Facebook page. We also know that Jim's memeing posted it, so thank you very much, guys, for doing that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the questions and comments that came through via the Instagram and via the Facebook page. So we'll start with those people first. And if you've got a question or comment, please leave it in the comment section and we'll try and get to it. Um, or give us a thumbs up or let us know what you're thinking. Um, if you want more stuff like this, let us know. Um, we're happy to do it, but we need to know that people actually want to see this type of content. Jim will attempt to answer any question that you have that's reasonable. So put it down there and we'll get to it. And basically what I will do is if you're not following Jim on social media, we obviously have the Jim's group page, but Jim now has a personal Instagram, which is at Jim underscore Penman on Instagram and also a, Jim's, a Jim Penman official Facebook page. So basically let's get started and welcome to everyone who's coming to watch now. So the first question that we get asked all the time, and this came by Facebook and by Instagram and stuff like that was, Basically, Jim, what has happened to the beard and the hat? Why did you shave it? Everyone always says that. They said, I'm disappointed. If they see a picture of you now, they're always disappointed to say, where's the beard and the hat? They get very let down. So what happened to the beard and the hat? Oh, the, the first thing to explain is that the beard has nothing to do with business and everything to do with women. The only reason <laughs> I grew a beard, and this was uh, 35 years ago, was that my then fiance liked beards. So I grew it to keep her happy. And... Um, 19 years ago, I found myself single through no particular choice of my own, and my beard was going a little bit grey, so off it came. That was all to do with women, nothing to do with business. <laughs> so basically, so would you ever try and grow it back, or have you tried to grow it back? No, I think, I think it'd be white now, actually. I, I, look, I look old enough anyway without, without adding to that. Because I know some of the mowing boys a while ago did the um, Movember, and you tried to grow a moustache back with that one. How did that go? No, it was very, very faint. It's it, it very pale. Because because you, you, your face hair is different colour. I, I had ginger hair when I was young, so it was kind of gingery, much paler. My hair is sort of darker. So a question here from on the feed here, I'll just interrupt with this one, is we've got from Tim Harvey on the Facebook feed, is can I buy a hat from you also? So we get questions a bit about can I buy Jim's merchandise or Jim's branded well, merchandise. We probably should. We, is it something we would look at or...? Yeah, we look at anything if there's, if there's, a, if there's a buck in it. But my, my hat is a pretty pretty ordinary one of those. I was going to bring one today, actually. Just one of those, like, army green hats like that. No, nothing unusual. It, was, it wasn't signed or anything like that. Maybe like a Jim's retro line. We can yeah. get all kit your bell back in the day, like the hat and all that sort of stuff, and maybe do some merchandise or something via jims.net. Yeah, there's, there's nothing particularly special about the hat. The reason I wore a hat is because my I've got fairly fair skin and I need a hat. But if you're mowing lawns, you're, you're going under branches and stuff all the time, so it kind of um, gets knocked off if it's a broad brim hat. So that's why I used to wear that kind of hat. <laughs> I mean, the picture is basically just me as I used to look mowing lawns. And, and the way that it arose, it wasn't anything very special. I used to do a lot of leafleting in the old days, and um, I found that if I put my picture on the, with the beard and the hat on the leaflet, I got more responses. It was as simple as that. And then when we franchised, well, you can't put a photo on a on a um, shirt, so we just got a picture drawn up of it. Not much thought in the talk. I know people spend millions of dollars doing logos. I don't think my logo cost me more than fifty bucks. <laughs> so we just got a question that came through then, which I want to ask from Mimi in the email, which was, Jim, what what's your goals? So what are your goals now at life? You're a bit older now, so what are your goals now at this stage in life? My goals actually the same as it has been for the past forty years. Um, I want to understand the way society works. I want to understand the science of society, what's happened to our civilization, how to change it. I'm interested in, in funding research into epigenetics and into biochemistry in those areas. I have a particular approach, which I believe has a lot of function. The only reason I went into mowing was because I couldn't get a job as an academic right back in the 70s, early 80s. So lawn mowing was a way to you know, become rich, I suppose. That was my aim, so I could fund my research. So my ultimate goal is research project. So there you go, Mimi. The ultimate goal is the research project, which he's doing now. Is there like a website for people or anything where they can look into it? Or 
Um, www.biohistory.org. Is, if you have a look at that, there's some videos up there that explains it, and you can also look at copies of my book, which is uh, called Biohistory and Biohistory, Decline and Fall of the West, which is a bit negative, actually, but still, it, it's about what's happened to our civilization and what we can do about it. And I have very different ideas to anybody else about what's happening. It's all basically to do with biology. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't know that, is that you do, you spend so much time with your research and you do have a PhD in history. Obviously, everyone just associates you with, let's say, mowing lawns and, and the group and all the other services now. But mm. it's important to um, check out check out biohistory.org. Um, there, there is a book on there, and there's a lot of videos on it. It's really good content. So basically, uh, question another question in from the live feed, Darcy Comb Varel. So if I mispronounced your name, what gyms franchises do you have? That's the question. So maybe I think that's maybe is that a services question? Like, what services do we have, or what divisions do we have? Yeah, we have about 50. divisions. Yeah. We have mowing, cleaning, dog wash, antennas, fencing, test and tag. <laughs> Building inspections, real estate, <laughs> handyman. Yes. Care. Yes. There's, there's, there's about 50. It, it, it's um, Skip bins, trees. Yeah. I, I'd probably be hard pressed to name them all myself, actually. I, I sort of know them, but as to, as to being able to say them all in the list, I probably couldn't do it. There's so many. Yeah, that's definitely, there is definitely a lot. Probably the best thing to do is visit, uh, Darcy is to visit gyms.net. There is a full list of them there. Yeah. Um, we're always looking to put more on. So I'll keep going with the questions that came by through um, the feeds first. So Robert Sana via Instagram asked, tell me three things why I should consider gyms over the competition. He's considering purchasing a gyms mowing franchise. Look, I could say there's things that gyms is different as for example we're the only franchise system in the world that allows our franchisees to vote out their franchisors if they don't give them good enough service or even to move to a different franchise or so it's very franchisee focused but really i'd say you, i'm not somebody you should be asking that what you should do if you're interested in franchises is go to two or three that look good including ours hopefully get a list of all of the franchisees in that area with their phone numbers. And if they don't give you the list, you don't go any further because it's required by law and then go and ring as many as possible and ask them what it's like. Are you happy you made the decision? Are you being looked after? Is your income good? Are you being supported? Are they nice to you? And if they say on the whole, no, you don't buy. And if, say, 90% are saying, yes, it's a good move, it probably is a good move. And, and I'd buy the best one, whether that's us or whether that's somebody else, I'd buy that. Some good advice there for you, Robert. Um, and just a little comment then coming on the feed, then a guy called Nick Kringle via Facebook has said, Jim, you're an Australian icon. So this probably ties back into the first one. Um, so basically... With, with with the logo now, how do you how do you think about what do you think personally about the logo being memed? There's obviously a site called Jim's Meeting, which is a great following, which is around eighteen thousand. And thanks again to them for sharing the post. What what do you think about the the how it's become almost like a little icon within Australian internet culture about being memed left, right, and centre? How do you personally feel about that? Well, it, it, it's it's pretty weird to be sort of nationally famous because that's so far from anything I thought when I was starting off this thing. I really it's kind of hard to hard to grasp sometimes, um, but in actual fact, people making jokes about it is is fun. I mean, we don't really mind. Um, people keep on. There's a band that's going around with Jim's Brazilians on it, and people keep on <laughs> calling me. Say, oh, you know this terrible thing, and I said, No, don't worry about it. It's funny. You know, nobody takes it seriously. They haven't even done the logo very well, um, so I don't really mind. I suppose the only thing that I get upset about is something like. Um, Jim's Holocaust denies or something like that because I don't think that's very funny. But most things. We had a, we had a competition, one national conference, to see who could uh, come up with the new divisions. And I thought the best one there was um, Jim's Hitmen. They had a little, like, white shirt, a little black gun on it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we'll plug them for you wholesale or something like that. It was, yeah. Yes, yeah, so there you go. So I think that the Jim's maiming stuff, Jim's all for it. Um, there's obviously some things he Bobby doesn't agree with, but um, end of the day, it's a good thing for us. And if people get enjoyment out of it, that's the way to go. So Nick Pringles just asked, I think we might have touched on this, but I'll follow this one up again. He said, did you used to look like the logo? I absolutely do. If you want to know where the logo comes from, there was an initial logo that was done when I first um, started off. 
and I had a very solemn look on my face and uh, some of my staff thought that wasn't that, such a good idea. So they took another picture and if you actually Google my name, you will see a picture of me standing in front of one of the old trailers with the old logo on it. And it's actually quite a common one. Just, just go on Jim Penman Images and you'll see that picture there. That's the actual picture that's the basis for the logo. And one of the, one of the problems is I'm not very good at smiling at cameras. So they were really, really trying to get me to smile. And the only way they could eventually get me to smile was because one of my managers pretended to put his tongue into the photographer's <laughs> ear and that made me smile. So if you want to know why Jim in the gym was like who's smiling, that's why. <laughs> Someone was putting, pretending to put the tongue in the ear. Yes. Another, right. another photo they were taking not too long afterwards, they, got one of my, they were really, really, really struggling to get me to smile. So one of the managers got up on a ladder and he had these, he put his pants down, he had these bright red <laughs> jockey pants on. So they had to go to these extreme lengths to get me to smile to camera. I'm still not good at it. There you go. That's a new story. That's the first one I've heard in eight years. That. So that's, um, there you go. I learned something that new was, every that day. Was, that was Greg Pizzola. That was Greg Pizzola, right. <laughs> So what I'll do is, thanks to everyone who's joining us now. I can see a few people are joining us. If you've got a question or a comment, please chuck them in the feed and we will try and answer it. In, if it's reasonable, we'll have, we'll have a go at it. Um, Rory Green via Facebook. This is a pre-submitted comment. Rory Green's actually a mowing franchisee from the sound of this question. He says, I purchased the new territory within the mowing division 10 months ago. I now have 38 clients and couldn't be happier with the business at this time. But I'm worried about growing too quickly. Being that I only have 10 months experience as a small business owner, should I consider slowing down? What should Rory do? Well, Rory's actually, I looked up his system and he's a, he's a great franchisee. Been with us since May last year. He's got a rating of, star rating of 4.6, which is really good. If I wanted something done, I would look up somebody's ratings and if they got 4.6 and above, I would, I would recommend it to anybody, family, friends, anybody. So he's a good operator and he's doing well and I think it's great and I hope he, I don't see why. As long as, you, as, long as customer service doesn't drop off, if you start going, getting so big that um, you're not looking after your customers well, then that's the time to slow down. But that's it. it's going great. I mean, I love it when people build these businesses. We had more than 180,000 unserviced leads last year, about one lead in four. It's, it's, it's a horrifying problem. So we love it when people put on workers and multiple trailers and vehicles on the road. It's, it's really good particularly in divisions like mowing and fencing and handyman where there's so much work. So a really good question just coming via the feed here uh, from Jim, Jim uh, Stelton, Stelton Pool. Sorry if I've stuffed that pronunciation up. What are your three best tips uh, to a successful business? Look after customers, number one. Be absolutely fanatical about making customers delighted. You want to amaze them. You want to wow them. And having said that, Try not to compete on price. I'm a great believer in the quality service, the great service. Things that matter are phoning back promptly, turning up on time, being presentable, being polite, and just making sure the job is absolutely immaculate. I can remember, look, I've made so many mistakes in business, but I can remember clients saying to me, I've never knew my lawn could look that good. And that's basically what got me going. I just used to find it very easy to find and keep clients, lots of referrals, lots of repeats. So that's the first thing. I would also say you need to take an attitude in business where you're always looking to improve what you do. The best operators are the ones that look at what they do every day and say, how can I do this better? How can I improve what I do? And see, people often think that hey, I was out there mowing lawns and suddenly, hey, presto, I thought let's have a franchise and suddenly I'm a millionaire. It doesn't work that way. It's thousands and thousands and thousands of little decisions. And even now, every day I ask the same question. We make changes to the system all the time. Every franchisee has my personal phone number and email address and they use it a lot. I'm always getting ideas through suggestions. If they look good, I pass them on to IT or whatever and then we go with them. And the third thing I say is is great thing about success in business. We looked at some of our absolute top people and the, the single most powerful thing about them is that they tend to be optimistic. People that have a positive attitude, people that don't get too discouraged. 
if you're in business, it's really important to have the support of your partner. We basically don't like to sign somebody unless they've got supportive partner. And they're happy in what they do. They enjoy what they do and recognize that, that things can go wrong. One of my strengths is that I'm very resilient. I don't get discouraged. My wife says I'm like one of those, you know, those things with the plastic with the weights in the bottom. You push them over, they bounce back. I'm like that. And that's been a great strength to me. So have a, a, a system of life and relationships that, and, and, and stay positive and have positive people around you and get positive support. They're the three main things. So I hope that answers your question, Jim. We've actually got a whole series on success in business with Jim. It's around 22 videos. You can be found via our YouTube channel. So if you just you, uh, type into YouTube, uh, Jim's group, look at the channel. There's a whole series on that where Jim will expand on that and more. But thanks for your question, Jim, and we hope that helped. Um, we've got around 51, I think we had around 51 people then joining us, so thank you to everyone who's tuning in. Uh, just recapping, we've gone over the origin of the beard and all that sort of stuff, and we've had some questions coming by the comments and also pre-done questions. So if you've got a question, uh, chuck it in the comments feed and we will attempt to answer it, answer it. obviously within reason, um, but if you just put it in there, we will try and get to it. So if you've got anything on your mind, it doesn't have to be related to business, it could be anything about Jim's story, you know, anything generally, it could be politics, whatever. Um, you know, chuck it in there and we'll have a go at answering it. So the next one I just want to go to is Jess Schilling. So Jess Schilling via Facebook, her comment was this, when questioned, sorry. I honestly didn't know the scope in which gyms has now become. A very powerful brand covering many bases. How does someone discuss new division potentials? So when we're bringing on a new division or someone says, here's an idea, what's the process? How is it discussed? How do we go through that? Okay. The first thing... It's very important. I'm a very easy person to contact. I'll actually give you my email address. It's jim at jims.net. Or if you email the office, they'll put you through. So anybody who has got any kind of idea for a business or any business they're in can get through to me very quickly. Then I will talk to them about the business initially. And I'll first of all want to know what do they know about it? Are they running a business successfully? That would be the prime thing. Somebody who's running a business, usually not a one-man band, but something with a few workers, great customer service, good systems, want to grow. So I'm looking for a successful business already. I'm also looking for an hourly rate. Now, our rule of thumb in gyms is that we do not interested in any business where we can't earn at least $60 an hour. I mean, an average operator with a bit of practice, $60 per hour. So there are certain things to do with government services where you just can't get that money. That doesn't interest us. Now, some of my franchises make a lot more than that. They make hundreds of dollars per hour. You'd be surprised. But it's got to be has the capacity for $60. Now, if that looks good at that stage, I will then introduce them to my team, which deals with new divisions, and we'll sit down and we'll go through it and, and go through it. It's not a very difficult process. We typically charge about $20,000 to get going, plus a bit of training and stuff. It's a quite a modest investment, but we just look for great people. That's, that's the biggest thing. If you look at the divisions that do well in gyms, They've got the best leaders. If you look at the regional franchises that do well, it's got the best franchisors. And if you look at the businesses that do well, it's got the best franchisees. It's much more to do with people than ideas. So there we go. I hope that answers your question, Jess. Um, another good question in the comments is from Adrian, Adrian Brincat. Hopefully I pronounced your name right. He asks, Jim, what are your hobbies? I know them, but maybe if you want to tell everyone, what are your hobbies, Jim? Um, I love... I love farming. I've got a farm and I love going out there and doing manual work on the farm. Ironically, gardening. I, I do that several hours a week. I really enjoy that outdoors, physical exercise. I love um, talking books, I'm, all kinds of things, books on business. I'm listening to one about now about Facebook. So you listen to a lot of audio books, though, don't you? Consume audio books, books, yes. Right. Whenever I'm doing anything exercising or, or driving, I'm always listening to audio books. I'm interested in current affairs, listen to read The Economist and so forth. I, I listen to lectures. I love to spend a lot of time with my family. I really enjoy my family. I've got I've a got, uh, wonderful wife and uh, 10 children, of which um, three are still living at home. So I spend a lot of time with them. And unfortunately, I've got to say, I spend far too much time playing computer games, which I wish I didn't. But <laughs> <laughs> well, so what game, well, so what game do you play then? What's your favorite game? What do you like playing? Well, um, nothing. I, I try and avoid things that are too addictive. I, I play a little silly risk game like called Conquest a lot. 
I, I love that for some silly reason. It only takes about 10 minutes to play, so it's good. And I, I do um, Scrabble. I mean, they're my main interests. But too much time wasted on that. I try not to learn about new games because they get addictive. I used to be really into things like um, Age of Empires and that sort of stuff. And, and my goodness, they eat up your life. <laughs> i got too much to do. So there you go. Just a little couple of the hobbies that Jim has. So hopefully that answered your question, Adrian. So just going down the comments here, there's a nice comment here from Bill Knight. So Billy Knight, via the Facebook comment live feed here, he said, we have been in gyms for over 15 years. It's true, I do have Jim's private email and I've emailed him and got a prompt reply. So oh, thanks, Bill, for thank it's a nice comment and putting that in there. Um, so there's another comment from here from, where is it? Sorry, let's get down here. From Chad, Chad Wardle on the Facebook comment feed. He's gone, do you have a landscaping franchise? It's part of Maui. The, the, way our, the way our system works is that when you're in a certain division, you have the absolute right to take any jobs in your territory covered by that division. Mowing people have the right to mowing, gardening, pruning, landscaping, and gutter clearing. And nobody else can have those. So the landscaping is done by the mowing guys. Having said that, um, there are certain people who specialize in it. And if you might see a, a trailer going down the road saying, Jim's landscaping. Well, that's simply a mowing franchisee who's chosen only to do landscaping. And by the nature of things, the way our system works, they can actually get quite a lot of landscaping work. So one of your franchisors, Nico Curter, has commented on it. He said, computer games classic. So Nico is actually one of our um, skip bins and trees, trees guys. He also, he also runs the divisions. He too. runs the so division he's too. He's one of the yep. top guys. Hello, Nico. Um, Russell Hall, he says, hey, Jim, from Jim's mowing, I think it's Bakewell up north in Darwin. So, mine franchise, they tune in. Yeah, hi, no. hi, Russell. Hey, Russell. We've got another one here from. Is it I, was in, I was in New Zealand just over Christmas and I saw a Jim's test and tag van driving down the road. So, we went over and brushed over and knocked on his window to say hello. And he just pointed to the thing on the back and said, That's me. Do you know who you were initially? Oh, he, I think he knew who I was. I think he knew who yeah. yeah. Right. And then basically, we've got another one from um, Lauren Bartley. She's gone. Uh, if you like uh, listening to business audio books, then you should check out this podcast. I think she's put in here a link here, so Business Addict, so we can give that to Jim to check out. So thanks for that suggestion, Lauren. Um, I'll continue with a couple of questions here. And then Jim's Maming's commented. It's the man himself, legend, living legend. So Jim's Maming's the page we gave a shout-out to before. Mm -hmm. Jim's Maming has around 18,000 likes. They do a lot of memings and people create memes and all that sort of stuff. So they shared this live this live. Uh, post we did as well before. So thank you very much to James Mimi. Um, they yeah, said, my, my kids are into James Mimi. I think it's the top meme in the country or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, James Mimi. James kids themselves actually. I think they probably follow your pages, do a lot of yeah. stuff and that. So but they don't usually admit who their father is, I must say. They, people find out, but they don't really <laughs> tell people. It's a bit embarrassing at times. Yeah. yeah. So I've got a couple more questions here that were pre-given to us. And as I said, put your questions in the comments, guys. As you can see, we are answering them. So I We've got around 39, 40 people still watching, so thank you for hanging around. Um, put them in there and we'll attempt to answer them. Can be about anything as well. So this is via Win Nang via Facebook. She's gone, I hope Jim's franchise will, will reach 100 division by 2020 or 2025. The more service, the better. Will this happen? So moving on, let's say the next next 10 years or six years, how, much more, how many divisions would you anticipate we would have? I could imagine hundreds of divisions eventually. There's, there's not a lot we couldn't do. We haven't even started on health, things like doctors and, and, and chiropractors and physios and all the other things we could do. We're starting personal training, so there's, there's really no upper limit. The difficult thing, though, it isn't a matter of just starting a division. The tough thing is you've got to have the right leadership to make it grow. That's why we've got like six or seven divisions now that have got more than 100 franchisees. And, and they're the ones that are really great, that are spread across the country and that are growing really, really fast. We've had two, two divisions just hit 100, just gone past. One is dog wash and one is um, pool care. And they've both just gone past in the last couple of months, which is, which is a big thing. So in a sense, I'd probably rather have 50 that had 100 franchisees plus all across the country than have, say, 200 that were only in one state. Great. So the next um, next question is from a Daniel Richards via the live the live uh, comment section. He's basically said, "What is the fastest growing division in the gyms group currently that you know of?" Dogwash is is doing incredibly well. Um, we've got a new division, which is an incredible lady, Sharon, and 
she took it over, I think, a year and a half ago. It had 60. Now it's almost doubled. Um, it's just, she's just an amazing person. She's not even a dog person, actually. She came from the cleaning division. She was a, a cleaner, became a cleaning franchisor. And then I basically offered to give her the dog wash division. I said, do a good job there. And uh, she's, just, she's just a wonderful human being. She's a perfect franchisor. She loves her franchisees so well. She's a great communicator. She looks after them like a mother hen. She's just a wonderful lady. And she recruits good people and trains her franchisors. So a couple more maybe, maybe some other ones that you can think of. I know Handyman. <clears throat> Building Always. Inspections is doing very, very well right, right now. That's, that's well past 100. That's been a great grower. So Building Inspections, yeah. Handyman's going great. We've got a guy called Archie in charge of that. He's done brilliantly. Handyman should have been our best division or one of them because there's so much work, but it wasn't well led. Archie took it over. It's, it's going very, very fast. He'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So going down here, here's a, here's a cheeky one I'll ask you. This is from a relationship of mine. He goes, what government rebates do you get for employing Joel Cleaver? You couldn't pay me enough to keep this guy on. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, the thing, about, the thing about gyms is interesting is because we're a smallish company, I only employ about 40 people, we can, we can pick the gold very, very quick. Joel came in, um, how long ago was it, six years ago? Nearly eight years eight ago. Eight years ago, yeah. basically doing unskilled... Um, work on a casual basis. He's now one of our, our top managers and, and I see future leader to the company. We've got a young girl who came from the call centre. She's 22, 23 years old, Hannah, and uh, she's now running Go Blitz, which is our, our newest idea to do something with all these unserviced leads we can't handle, pass them out to independent contractors. So our, our um, head of accounts is uh, just about 30. And she's a, she's a wonderful lady. So we kind of, being a small company, we can recognise talent very quickly. And that, that applies in the franchise network too. If you're good, you can, you can show your lights very quickly. So there you go, Dominic. I did page in before that as well, so that might have um, yeah. skewed the answer a bit. So there we go. Um, now I'm from Chad. Good, good thing about Joel is that he's a younger generation. He understands the digital world. I am not good on this kind of I don't even, I don't even go on Facebook myself. So he, he's, he's, he's the expert. But to be fair, though, you're very open to this sort of stuff. You know, we, we had no oh, restrictions yeah. on it before. You didn't say anything I could ask or not ask. So you've had been pretty fair. I know how business. useful it is. The, yeah. the, the thing about in business, I'm not necessarily very good at a lot of things, but I'm good at recognising people who are and let them have their head and supporting them. You don't have to be good at everything. In fact, sometimes people who are very good at doing everything don't do as well because they try and do everything themselves. Whereas I recognise I'm not good at most things, so I say, okay, you do it, you do that, you do that, and that works quite well. So let's go down the feed. So we've got a, the next question up was from Chad Wardle again. He says you touched on mowing being the landscape, and does the diggers model roll into that as well? Oh, diggers is is very different. Mowing guys couldn't do it because they don't have the machinery and the skills or anything. So diggers works with divisions like like the mowing landscapers and and uh, fences that they dig the holes and stuff. So there's around 68 people watching now, so welcome to everyone and thank you for everyone who's taking the time to tune in. As I said, there's a lot of comments. We will, we will hang around. Jim has said we'll hang around for as long as we can. If people are watching and answering questions in the comments, we will try and go down and, and attempt to answer as much as we can. Um, we haven't got many left that were pre-given to us now, so we're happy to take the ones in there as much as we can. So I'll just work my way down here. We've got Rufy, uh, is it Rufy G? I presume that's Ruth Govic. So their comment is my husband... I think it's John. John Govick. Yeah, My husband and I are regional franchisors for Jim's Termite and Pest Control Victoria. We have a great team and receive great support. Thank you, Jim, for the amazing opportunity. <laughs> it's a nice comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, John's a good guy. He's doing well. And we've got Kim Penner. He's called himself King Kong Penner on Facebook, but he, Kim is Jim's electrical. He's a franchisor as well in South Australia. Sharon's just commented in as well. You gave a big back oh, to Sharon, Sharon before. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's uh, Hi, Sharon. We actually, it's interesting, when you get people who are so good, and, and Sharon's an example, we actually rewrite the manual. We, we train franchisors very differently to what we did even a couple of years back. We started to realise, for example, that a franchisor's job is as much personal as it is business advice. It's being a friend, being a support. And people like Sharon have, are so successful, they show us how to do that. I, I, it's great to learn. I can tell you what, the people that we've got now are far better franchisors than I ever was because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, I think, I think with, with you, the, what's, what people need to know is that the system that Jim's has created with franchising was basically created on the go, wasn't it? You reacted mm -hmm. to stuff that was suggested. 
And just letting everyone know, with our contracts and stuff, for example, it can change overnight depending on, on what happens in terms of a policy or something that's happened or a suggestion that's really good for the benefit of the company. We, will, we won't go through a, through a slew of you know, analysis and that sometimes. It's just really quick to get stuff changed, which is also a good thing as well. Um, another comment here from is it uh, Katra, uh, I don't know if it's Katrina Jabke. I don't know. Sorry if I mis mispronounce your name. She says Sharon is awesome, full of knowledge and very help helpful. <laughs> helpful. It's great for that comment. Uh, we'll keep going down here. Is it Abdul Samad? Samad. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. Jimmy says you are an absolute bloody legend, which is nice. Thank you, Abdul. <laughs> Uh, we'll um, keep working our way down here. A you lot of you do realise that legends are largely mythical, don't you? I mean, <laughs> I am real. That's one of the straight. You, you know, the most single most common question that our franchises get asked, is there really a gym? They, they, seriously, it's the number mm. one question. So when they come to training, they usually do selfies with me to, so they can prove that there is. I, I, I even get asked the question myself. I was in the airport in Mackay a couple of years back and a lady asked me, she saw the shirt that I'm wearing, and she said, you know, you're from gyms, are you? And I said, yes. She said, is there really a gym? And I said, yes, there is. And she said, have you met him? And I just, just smiled and walked away. But uh, even I get asked that. So another one here from um, Joshua Elms. He says, hi, I'm a Ballarat mowing franchisee going on 10 years. Um, hey, Josh. Decade with gyms mowing, great. And um, 10 he said, years. he's asked, Good when record. is Jim's jobs coming back online? Which is a great question. Mm, yeah. Yeah, Jim's Jobs, for those who don't know, is how it's a program that's designed for franchisees and built for franchisees. Um, we've tried different things, but it's the most popular one. So what we're now doing, we've got a company in India that's turning into a different um, language so it can become multi-platform. And that should be done, well, we've got an absolute date of the 1st of November. So sometime this year, by the end of the year, we should have this, this ready to anybody to be able to use it. So Jim, hope, yeah. It's a great program. It's really simple to use. It just hasn't been updated. But now we're going to really work with this. It's going so, to be fantastic. So I hope that answers your question, Josh. If you want more detail, you can email through and we can get you some more detail. Mm -hmm. um, another one here mentions about Jim's shark tank, question mark. So, <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, but no, if, you, you know, if the shark tank come calling, would you go on that show? I don't know if you've seen the show, Jim. Yeah, no, I, I saw it once. Yeah. The, um, the, the, the About people investing in other people's mm. businesses, though, I never do that. We have so many opportunities to do things within gyms. I would never invest in anybody else's business. Now, this is a strange one. I'll ask this anyway because he's taking the time to write it. Sam James comments on the Facebook feed. He's gone, Jims, have you heard of the World of Warcraft raiding guild taking the oceanic community by storm? <laughs> now, you mentioned community. You mentioned video games before. Do you ever play? I know there's, there's a big war, World of Warcraft. Did you ever try World of Warcraft or anything like that? Or No, I never do. I, I, I know my own weaknesses. Um, I, I try not to do things that are too addictive. I, 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 I'm trying to do so many things that are useful, and I'm, and I'm pretty lazy by nature. I know if I get into a, into a game that's addictive, I could just get buried in it. I used to play for uh, too much. I've wasted too much of my life playing war games, sorry. But in a sense, you know, like a, a business is, is like a giant... It's like a giant game, but you get paid for playing. It's very fun business. So I, I try and focus on that. So another one here from Jim's. Jim's Maining has said, can we add Jim's Maining as an official Jim's Group division? If you can work out a way to get $60 an hour out of it. <laughs> well, there you go. So the option's open. So Sam James follows and again. He says, Jim's raiding on World of Warcraft. Give us a shout out. So I presume it's like a team on World of Warcraft. They've called themselves Jim's Raiding. Jim's Raiding, oh, well, good name, good name. I hope, I hope you're doing incredible and, and beat up your enemies. There you go, Sam. So Josh Riley comments on Facebook. Sorry, Josh, I understand your question now. He goes, I remember Jim on TV talking about a pharmaceutical drug that would help people with addictions and change mm. human health for the better ETC, then never heard anything more. I was just wondering if that ever continued as the story was interesting. Sorry, Josh, I didn't understand your question before, so I understand it now. So It's, it's, it's going flat out. And actually, in fact, this year... We should be able to really get some good resource into it. And I'm about to go off on Monday to meet my research. I've got two research teams working on it, one on pheromones and one on the epigenetic side. And I'm just about to go and meet them and, and, and work to expand this thing. I hope. I, I believe it's very we've actually seen some very interesting results on rats. We've actually managed to make them much better mothers, for example, and more uh, exploratory, which is in rap term, more hard working just by using pheromones. We've also spotted certain kinds of um, 
genes that can be turned on and, and will have dramatic effects on behavior. So we're looking at the epigenetics, which is the way that the, that the body controls how genes are expressed. Sorry, it's a bit technical, I know, but, but we are working on this kind of stuff. And it, it, it's very exciting. It's actually, it's amazing what can be done. I, I think this stuff could transform the world. Because I, I think most problems of addiction and poverty, mental illness, all these things, all these issues that, that besiege the world, to me, they're basically obviously epigenetic. You have a certain kind of upbringing, your genes are switched on or switched off in certain ways that gives you a character that makes you likely to become an alcoholic or a drug user. If we could find the right way genes that are turned on or off, and we've got some pretty good candidates, we basically arrange to change the settings. So somebody might take an injection and, and they're a hopeless drug drug user and, and you know they're, they're depressed and they're, and they're in a dreadful mess. And they take an injection and, and it changes their, their, their character in a way, it's with their own choice, of course, that means that they, they, they suddenly, I don't need this stuff anymore. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, I just want to get down and, and work. And, and yes, I want to build my marriage back. And I believe, I believe that everything depends on character. And character is mainly epigenetic in origin. So if we can get the keys to character and we can work out how to help people to change them, I think this will have an incredible effect beyond anything before known in, in human history. That is, that, is my, that is my goal, that is my mission. So there you go, uh, Josh, thanks for the question. Hopefully that's a little brief synopsis of where it's at for you. So I'm just going down the comments now. Here, as I said, thanks to the 40, 41 people now who are still watching and, and posting comments, we appreciate it. We'll try to get to them all. Um, Jamie By tagged Sharon Connolly and says was, she was well taught. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, taking all the credit. Well, Jamie's a good teacher, that's for sure. That's right. When we do our training, all of our all of our teachers are, are assessed by every franchisees for every session. So you have to be good to be a Jim's trainer. So Jim's Maming here commented the uh, they said the living legend. Thanks, Jim Maming, for your comment again. It's great. Um, Steve Walkham has gone. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've been called Jim over the years. <laughs> That's right. The, the funny thing is that they don't think I'm Jim, but anybody who turns up is called Jim. Somebody will say, "Yeah, my name is Bill," and they say, "Oh, that's okay. Well, all right, Jim, go ahead." <laughs> All the time. So another, another gentleman here is a bro, it's uh, Brosnan mowing uh, Bray Park. He says I get asked this, get asked, are you Jim as well? So even franchisees, I presume, would get asked, are you Jim all the time? A lot of a lot of um, a lot of franchisees look more like me than I do. I mean, they've got beards <laughs> on. So yeah, that's that's pretty, That's probably true. Um, Jim's maiming is gone here. The, their page, he's basically saying their page gets plenty of messages from people confusing me with the actual Jim's page. I always make sure to redirect them to your page number and website. So we appreciate you doing that, Jim's maiming. Do we appreciate all the work you do. Um, Bill, Bill Nye, this is, another, this is a question related to Jim's jobs. He's gone, I only use the old Jim's jobs. Mm. Too scared to update because there was always glitches, which was true. Yeah, you're right. We're, we're, going, to be being, we're going to be very careful this time. We're going to do massive testing. We're going to keep the same format, the same look. Jim's jobs is incredibly easy to use. We want to maintain that, but just let it do the so you can take it around on your on your phone and, and, and you can you know you can quote your clients and you can get them to pay you and all kinds of things within the program. And you can still use it at home if you want to, just the same. It'll look the same, but it'll be able to do a huge amount more. Yeah, so hopefully that answers your question a bit, Billy. We understand there's a lot of problems with it, so um we're hoping this time we can get it sorted. Um, where is it here? Let's get going down. Jim's Maming suggests Jim's Gaming. So obviously there's eSports is a massive thing now. Um, there's teams being sponsored everything. So we're open to any teams. I know that Jim's Rating has a team online before. So yeah. any any eSports teams who wants to use the Jim's brand or something, I guess it's and, something we're open okay, to. Any, anybody wants to use our brand, we're, we're pretty happy with that as long as people don't take it seriously. If you, if you start doing something out in the field, like you want to install water tanks, we had a, a company called Jim's Water Tanks, and um, they, they had a lot of trouble. People were ringing us up, and they said, well, it's not us. And it didn't have our logo. They just thought it was Jim's, so therefore when they had a, a strife, they could, they could come to us. But unfortunately, they can't. So uh, Billy Nye has commented again, and he's gone, my Jim's mowing address stamp died this week after 15 years. That's a lot of invoices. Jim, I need a new envelope stamp. After 15 years, we should get a Jim's gift box. So... Billy and I will have to. Um, we've got the comment here. We can take down your details and we can we can see what we can do. I'm sure, we can find you a yeah. new stamp bill. We can sure he can find something. Years, oh, 
we should actually close it up fairly soon. I've got to get home for. Okay, how much longer can you stay for? We've got around 44 people still on. There's a few questions still so, coming so, in. So it's only until quarter two. Okay, so another five. So we've got another five minutes on the feed here. So as I said, any questions we don't answer today, if you've liked this, we, we're open to doing more of this as a regular thing. Leave us a comment or some feedback and we'll do it. Um, and if we don't get to your question today, the questions that are in the comments, I'll go through them and we'll definitely answer them first up like we did before. Um, I just want to touch on one that was on the piece of paper, a bit more of an off-kilter one. It was from Sean Daly on the Facebook comment. He put, he should have said, he basically said, run for Prime Minister, Jim. Would you run? <laughs> they wouldn't have me. Neither major party would have me. The, the, the whole system, both parties, I, I believe this whole country is run by the elites for the elites and um, you know, lawyers and tax accountants and, and all kinds of people ripping people off right left and center. I, I, I am even the way franchising is treated, you know, they, they have a franchising code and what they do is they say everybody's got to have their contract checked out by a lawyer. Well, that is the biggest gift to lawyers you can imagine. And it's useless because, because what does the contract tell you? What I said, and this I said to every inquiry, is that that every body should be set up so that every year, every franchisee in the country is polled and asked what sort of support they're getting and all this information made absolutely public without cost. Now, if you did that, that would have a thousand times more effect. But, but that's, a, that's an example of something that would help ordinary people that wouldn't make a lot of money for lawyers and financial advisors. So, of course, it would never be done. There are so many examples of the way, like our property prices that are so incredibly out of whack. They're massively more than we should be paying for housing because it benefits people with wealth and property speculators and corrupt politicians and all the rest of it. There's so much wrong. If I was ever going to be in politics, I wouldn't be in any major party. I'd be uh, having a go at them all. I'm, I'm trying to write a book about it right now when I find the time. So there you go. There might be a book coming about the whole... Jim's thoughts on the political it's, it's system. It's going to be called, if I ever get it finished, it's going to be called To Make Australia Fair. I just hope I don't set too many people they stop using our service. <laughs> well, at least then I'll be an honest read. Um, let's run for another question here on the feed real quickly. Jamie Byatt has gone, what's Jim's thoughts on starting your own business versus franchising? So more of a business orientated question. Well... People often think if they start their own business, they're more likely to grow very, very big. But in, in fact, I'd say franchising in general is a great way to start because it shows you how. And in, in a service business, it gets you the clients to get off the ground. Most, most, most independent businesses, service businesses, fail in their first year. With us, it's about 10%. So you've got a lot better chance of getting going. But the thing is, too, once you're in a franchise business, you're not stuck there. Now, a lot of my most successful franchisees actually left me long ago. We've got one guy, one of my first franchisees, a guy called Andrew McIntosh. Um, he was an early franchisee, a franchisor. He's now incredibly wealthy. He owns a whole stack of, of different um, nurseries. I know he's into property development in a big way. Um, and there's many other people that started with me now who are millionaires and multi-millionaires. Many of them, they've left. So I, I would say franchising... It's a great way to learn about a business. Just do your research on what's a good franchise. And, and there are problems with people like Retail Food Group, these dreadful companies that really exploit people so badly. If people did their homework properly, they wouldn't buy into these things. You spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's, it's appalling what goes on in this industry. And there's very little protection from the government in any way. Not even information that would help. So we've probably got time for one more question, guys, before we wrap it up. Um, just a few of the comments, Jim, a few of the franchisees and Zors are saying, this is great, keep doing more of it, which is good. As I said, we, we, we can do more of this. Jim's happy to do this on a weekly basis, fortnightly, whatever, depending on how much interest there is. If there's interest. And the questions as well, if you find it valuable. So as I said, pop your questions in the comments field. We won't get to them today. We will do them again. We'll be next week. As I said, I'll read out your name. We'll do your comment or your question, and away we go. And then we'll try and answer as many as we can on the live feed. Um, I'll just go through. We'll, we'll, run, we'll, we'll go with one more, Jim. All right. Now, now Jim's memeing is gone. I'll give Jim's memeing. We'll do Jim's memeing as the last question. He's gone. How many Jim's franchises globally are there? So, do you know how many franchisees we currently have globally? Uh, just under three thousand nine hundred. So, just under three thousand nine hundred. Hopefully, we we'll get to more than four thousand this year. 
I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so what countries are we in at the moment? We obviously got a... Australia and New Zealand are the main ones. We've got about 50-something in Canada, in Vancouver, and about 20, 25 in the UK. So we really Australia and New Zealand. They're, Gyms works best very well in Australia and New Zealand because it's a very egalitarian sort of system and Australians and New Zealanders are very egalitarian. The, the idea that somebody with a, you know, university degree or from a corporate environment should go out and start mowing lawns or building fences would be very alien in North America or Britain. But the people here are happy to do it and, and bank managers in particular, people like that. And uh, and when they do, instead of being seen as... as going downhill the people say oh wow that's great you got your own business now you're not you're not working for the men anymore and, and they love it so because we're a more equal society we can get some very high caliber people doing these kinds of jobs so i think we'll I think you gotta run now don't you have you got have you got a date for valentine's day today do you jim <laughs> My, my daughter's just got back from Europe, so we're going to have dinner together, family dinner. Family dinner together. All right, so Jim's off to family dinner. Um, this is our Jim's national office here. If you don't know, Jim actually lives next door to here. So there's no excuse for Jim ever being late in the morning because it's literally, how far is the walk? 100 metres? 50 yeah, metres? It, it, it's, it's about three minutes through a bush track. I live a perfect lifestyle. That's it. So um, thank you for everyone who watched and for commented. Yeah, you know, thank you. There's around 50 people watching now. Thank you very much for doing that. If you like this stuff, comment, like the video, let us know. We are happy to do this on a regular basis. So the more questions, the comments, the better. As you can see from what we've, we've done, we've tried to answer as many as we can. Um, and as you can see, they're not all business related. They can be related to anything, Jim's hobbies, um, what do you think on this, whatever. So hopefully for the next time around, we get a more gener uh, spread of pre-done questions and I'll, we'll give you a shout out. We make sure we get through it. So everyone who watched this thank you very much um hopefully you found some little nugget of information in there that you didn't know and, and here's the man himself so the man behind the logo here he is so we're happy to do this as i said leave a comment like us on facebook jim has a personal instagram which is at jim underscore penman we also have jim penman official on facebook now as a page like the jim's group page share it um and, and as i said let us know what your response is to this video and we'll do more of it if there's enough of a response if it's enough of a response, we could do this again next week. I don't know, Jim, what, you, what your thoughts are, but I can tell you the stats for you and we can go from there. Yeah, look, I'm happy to do it if the interest there. Okay. It's, good, it's good to have some of my franchisees. I can talk to you direct. Um, yeah. You, you can see me while I'm saying things. So yeah, thanks thanks to the franchisees and the Zors who um, tuned in. It was really good, and everyone else as well took the time to do it. Um, we appreciate it. So any final words, Jim, before we go? And... No, that's coming. I've got to go off to dinner. All right, so. no worries. Enjoy your dinner. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, have a good evening. Thank you.